Welcome Stardust! Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Stephanie and you're watching the second installment of Bridge Presentations. In this series, I plan to create interesting and insightful metaphysical videos for you, uh, my dear audience, so you can understand more the origins and history and the pulp culture references and basically <laughs> I did your homework for you and you don't have to research too too much um, when you watch these uh, bridge presentations because I'm bringing that knowledge to you. Um, I want you um, on your spiritual quest to be well informed so you can better debate, discuss, and discern what is right for you on your spiritual journey. That's actually very important for me. So in today's video, we're going to be covering what is the difference between pagan, Wicca, and witchcraft. And the reason why I created this is because I really want individuals that are considering starting the craft to understand the difference between um, these uh, practices. It's not just a so I say practices, but it's it's so much more than that. It's cultural history, it's spiritual philosophy, and it's really a matter of understanding what it is that you're getting into when you're not part of that specific ethnicity and cultural background. And yes, um, ethnicity does play a role when it comes to paganism because they are overall, I'm giving you a, a, a preview, Basically, all of this is under the, like paganism is an umbrella term and it encompasses an array of different type of cultures, um, folk magic, um, different groups, um, you know, throughout the world, but specifically, you know, throughout Europe. And it's their ethnicity and tradition and um, spirituality in their communities from antiquity that have been passed on from generation to generation. And then as we come closer to the 19th, 20th and 21st century, we kind of get a melting pot of all of these spiritual traditions. And it can get really confusing. People like to, you know, pigeonhole and kind of group things together when they shouldn't be grouped together. So I really think it's important to understand the difference between what it means to be a pagan and what it means to practice uh, Wicca or to be Wiccan and or if you consider yourself to be a witch in witchcraft. There is categories within these different types of spiritual movements and I really hope you enjoy it. So like anything else, if I don't cover everything that you may think I should have covered, please feel free to leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Um, and with that, why not <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel? I'm really trying to um, get 1,000 subscribers so I can be part of that YouTube partnership program. I'm really um, dedicating myself to creating a higher quality content, more consistent content for you, my dear viewers, so your support would be ever so greatly appreciated. Okay. My goal is to debate, discuss, and discern metaphysical subjects to educate as objectively as possible for you to make informed decisions about your spiritual path. I encourage you to always ask questions, do your own research, follow your bliss, and always remain sovereign. Let's take a look at the table of contents and what we're going to cover in this presentation today. Now, my dear Stardust, just grab a cup of tea, a cup of joe, sit back, relax, and just listen and observe this presentation, and hopefully it will bring you some insights that you've been seeking or searching for, and or just to pass the time in taking a moment to learn something new um, in your everyday life. The History of Paganism which includes Wicca and witchcraft, is important for modern-day people to learn and remember. Understanding the ritualistic practices and belief systems of people from different countries, clans, and ethnicities in the past is crucial. As a society, 
we need to be aware of cultural appropriation and respect the indigenous traditions of those cultures. Sometimes, spiritual groups borrow from these traditions because they have a connection with aboriginal or cultural tribes and wish to reintroduce those teachings to the mainstream world. However, this should be done with cultural sensitivity and reverence for the original culture's traditions and religious practices. It's acceptable to revive ancient teachings as long as these spiritual groups are transparent about it and honor its origins. The main spiritual paths of paganism to be found in the UK and the United States are Wicca, Druidry, Shamanism, Goddess Spirituality, Sacred Ecology, Heathenism and various magical groups. Some core beliefs are shared by all these groups. Firstly, pagans believe that no one belief system is correct and that each person should have the freedom to come themselves to the path of their choice. Quote by, Hardman, Charlotte Harvey, Graham. 1995, Paganism Today. Harper Collins Publishers. Paganism today is a label for a group of religions which are inspired by images and ideas from the old religions, the pre-Christian religions of Europe. They're the religions rooted to the land, farthest back in our traditions. Modern paganism is also divided into several traditions, of which the most important are pagan witchcraft, particularly the high ritual witchcraft known as Wicca, Druidry, shamanism, and the northern traditions, that's those who turn to Viking or Anglo-Saxon deities. The idea of modern pagan witchcraft is to try and blend religion and magic, and to re-enchant places, people, objects, to make the world more sacred, to make people more powerful. The word pagan has its origins in Latin and originally referred to people who lived in rural areas or countryside regions. In Latin, paganus was used to describe villagers, country dwellers, or those who lived outside of the main cities. Over time, the term evolved to take on religious connotations, particularly in the context of early Christianity. As Christianity spread throughout the Roman Empire, practitioners of traditional, indigenous religions, as well as those who adhered to non-Christian beliefs, were often found in rural areas rather than in the urban centers where Christianity gained prominence. Consequently, the term, paganus, came to be associated with those who continued to follow pre-Christian, polytheistic, or animistic religious traditions. The term, pagan, began to carry a pejorative connotation, signifying individuals or groups who were perceived as adhering to, false, or, heathen, beliefs, in contrast to the monotheistic faith of Christianity. Early Christian writers often used paganus to distinguish non-Christians from followers of their own faith. As Christianity became the dominant religion in Europe and beyond, the term pagan continued to be used to refer to those who practice non-Christian religions, including various forms of polytheism, nature worship, animism, and folk beliefs. During the Middle Ages and the early modern period, the term was often used in a derogatory manner by Christian authorities to denounce and suppress indigenous spiritual practices. In more recent times, particularly with the rise of modern pagan movements such as Wicca and Neo-Paganism, the term pagan has been reclaimed and redefined by practitioners to describe their own religious and spiritual beliefs. Today, pagan is often used as an umbrella term to encompass a diverse range of contemporary religious, spiritual, and magical traditions that draw inspiration from pre-Christian and indigenous sources. Now that you know a little bit about what the word pagan means and its significance, um, I really want to reiterate that paganism is an umbrella term to kind of group together a lot of different cultural traditions that are basically outside of the mainstream religions. Sometimes you can term it that they are um, polo polytheistic 
meaning that they believe in more than one god or goddess, that it's not just monotheistic. However, I do believe uh, that you can um, share belief systems within paganism and hold a monotheistic viewpoint. After all, all of these deities have to be created by something. <laughs> I think what people really get stuck on is that it's the Abraham, Abrahamic uh, religion that the God of the Bible, you know, the way that they promote that religion um, is the be all and end all and everything outside of that is of the devil which in true spirituality is a lot more complex and we as humans haven't really evolved <laughs> our consciousness to be a little bit more broad we're still stuck in our um, belief systems and concepts that we're just not willing to learn other types of ideas for most of the time uh, so what I really wanted to show in this next part with neo-paganism is that you're going to learn that now they're using terms like neo-pagan, meaning something new in, in, in this age. But that's the thing that happens with each generation. You know, words, terms, groups, they, they get labeled in such a way, but it really doesn't hold true to its true origins and roots and what it really means because the peoples that were practicing quote-unquote paganism in the antiquity in the olden days didn't call themselves pagan they called themselves their actual ethnicity their where they where they came from if they immigrated from somewhere or the land that they were on and they would practice their ancestral lineage and those practices belief systems ceremonies and traditions were a mixture of different um, ideologies to gods and goddesses maybe even entities or spirits or just worshiping of the land and or having a reverence for the land and understanding the cycles of the seasons and having their own um, perhaps superstitions and folk magic associated with that. And that is what pagan is, but that is not a pagan. <laughs> They're not pagans. Pagan is a word used. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it's actually almost der derogatory because it's not what they are. They are their, their that name's ethnicity. And there's a lot of, of different ones. They come from different as different areas around the world. I mean, we, we we're focused a lot on the um, the British and the like European continents, but you can think of like say Aboriginals from uh, you know North America or Australia as being pagan because they have their own ethnicity, culture, and superstitions and that is outside of the quote unquote mainstream religions, the Abrahamic religions, the, the monotheistic um, propaganda that, you know, is in the world. And I, I just wish people can take a step back from their own personal belief systems and look at this it, like an academic, like a true historian archaeologist and then go into theology i mean there's respect and reverence for each but that's that's not the case and what i really wanted to like, try to tell people is that you know when you're calling someone a pagan now people just the pagans they just take the name because that's just what's in the consciousness of people but that's not truly what you are and um when I first started my journey, if you look at my past videos, I'm no longer like Wiccan, but when I was really heavily involved in paganism and Wicca in my early teens, 20s, and early 30s, I, I, I knew I loved what I was doing, but I, I didn't quite understand the cultural and historical origins of things. 
and I really want to take the time for people to understand. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, <laughs> what I'm presenting today. It, it's very much in depth. But to conclude and not rant is that the actual name pagan and paganism doesn't really mean what it means. It's a, it's a word that was given uh, in a certain century to, to mean a group of people. And that is unfortunately cultural you know, discrimination. Um, the peoples that were not in mainstream religions, they have their own culture, their own names. I'm not going to name them here. Like there's a lot of, because they come from different, d different areas of, of the world. So they have their own name of things. And we don't take the time to understand that because it's lost in history. It's not in the forefront of our consciousness. And when we look at mainstream spirituality and pop culture, you know, we're, we're getting all of these unfortunate, like hyped terms about what it means to be a pagan and it's sensationalized. It's fantasy and it's not bridged in reality. And I'm here to bridge <laughs> that remembrance of historical facts of the past to have respect, reverence, and not proceed in propagating cultural appropriation. We have to understand that if we're borrowing from other cultures, you know, what it is that we're doing and that we're going about it in a respectful way. So I don't like the term neo-pagan. I think there is, it's basically saying like you're having a new interpretation or it's a new start to this old religion, this old ancient religion or this nature religion. And even just calling it just that is not really respecting what it actually is historically. So let's continue <laughs> down um, this definition and we're going to take a look at uh, neo-paganism right now. In the term neo-pagan, the prefix neo- dash is derived from the Greek word neos, which means new or recent. Therefore, neo-pagan literally translates to new pagan. Neo-pagan is used to describe modern pagan movements and revivalist traditions that have emerged or been reconstructed in recent times, particularly in the 20th and 21st centuries. These contemporary pagan movements draw inspiration from pre-Christian and indigenous spiritual practices but are often adapted to fit modern contexts and beliefs. The prefix neo dash distinguishes these modern pagan movements from ancient or historical pagan religions that were practiced in antiquity. While neo-pagan movements may incorporate elements of ancient pagan traditions, they are typically characterized by their contemporary interpretations, adaptations, and innovations. Examples of neo-pagan traditions include Wicca, Druidry, Heat Henry, and various forms of eclectic or eclectic pagan spirituality. Neo-pagans claim that their beliefs and practices spring from ancient sources. Specifically, most seen in goddess worship a rediscovery of folk practices that persisted in rural Europe throughout the Christian era and up to recent times. However, the current neo-pagan revival can only be firmly traced to events and trends in the mid-19th century. Quote by Carol Matthews, Baritical, Neo-Paganism and Witchcraft. Now my dear friends, I'm going to be showing you a slide that um, I'm going to link the reference of where I got this chart from. I did not create it, but it's worth investigating, you know, where all of these different cultures came from because when we're looking at witchcraft wicca and magic and and paganism as a whole like i was saying in my my earlier rant <laughs> it's borrowed from other cultures and even the umbrella term now that i'm going to be using shamanism the shaman is actually really indigenous aboriginals Indigenous Aboriginals, the original peoples of the land, of wherever they were born, the indigenous peoples. And those indigenous peoples had their own spiritual philosophies, traditions, and that included what we would now term as, you know, starting to look like what people do in Wicca and what people do in magic and what people do in witchcraft and what people kind of do in ceremonies and rituals and festivals and holidays and reverence in paganism. It's all 
descendant from shamanic uh, indigenous aboriginals cultures and i'm not talking only about their aboriginals that that you may have in in the forefront of what that means but we're talking about aboriginals of the land such as the druids who they were so you really have to be your own indiana jones archaeologist to try to really dig deep in figuring out what is the hierarchy what is the origins of all of this mean and not a lot of people care and i don't know why but i'm a stickler for that in spiritual development you have to understand where these things come from so here's um a, like a little bit of a timeline like explaining you know where these other types of cultures came from and how we are actually the descendants of those cultures but they're not always named and they're not always in the spotlight because people like to just focus on one or two sensational things and a lot of it um you know was sensationalized in the uh, magic community with a lot of prominent figures bringing um you know ceremonial magic uh all kinds of of magic and witchcraft back into the you know, back into the public without fear of being persecuted. But it's, it's very, it's very, uh, it's a very big melting pot of things. So I really want to bring it into your, your forefront consciousness of like, okay, do you know that paganism is actually shamanism and shamanism is actually the indigenous aboriginals, original cultures, traditions, folk magic from all over the world, from all, all over the world. And we that is the descendants like that that's its origin and we have to pay reverence to that so let's take a look at this little interesting chart and continue on this presentation So now you've come to a point where you kind of understand what the difference between pagan and paganism as an umbrella term. And then we're getting into what is Wicca being Wiccan and how that spiritual religion was founded and started and the different types of figures that promoted it. So you can kind of understand that even though Wicca is said to be based on ancient, an ancient religion and is nature based, um, it is a more recent, it's a new religion in our modern era. It's not, it's based on older traditions, but it's a new religion. And um, basically, you know, understanding the difference between what it means to be a Wiccan as a religious spiritual practice and and that it may not always include witchcraft and magic that's the thing that's why i want to start to break down these concepts in your mind that it's not all grouped together a lot of people are just wiccans and they 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 follow the wheel of the year and they follow it as a religion um in their own spiritual path but they don't feel inclined to include ceremonial magic elemental or any type of folk magic they don't want to work with witchcraft they just feel more comfortable in their spiritual practice which could be a combination of of ceremony and ritual that looks like witchcraft but really is not about witchcraft because you know then we get into like what are the different subcategories of witchcraft like is it spellcraft is it candle magic is it intentional magic like what what is the actual goal of what it is that you're doing sometimes it can just be simply about protection protecting the home so now we're getting into superstition charms protection is that the same thing as like hardcore ceremonial magic no it's definitely not so you know there's a lot of subcategories there and people are not aware of that so it's really important to, to now you understand like this is what pagan paganism is this is what wicca is
Wicca is classified as a nature-based religion encompassing a wide variety of beliefs, traditions and practices inspired by many different sources, Wiccans often refer to these sources as the old religion. There are several different forms and traditions under the umbrella term of Wicca, generally with overlapping elements such as pantheism, polytheism, an emphasis on ritual, and a deep respect for all living things. Wicca has been described as a shamanic religion. Shamanism is a term originally used to refer to ancient religions found in regions of Asia, but it has since been used in reference to many indigenous traditions throughout the world, whose origins predate written history. Shamanism is often called the world's first religion, although it would not have looked like the major religions of today with their uniform beliefs and consistent practices that span continents. Wicca is a modern pagan religious movement that emerged in the mid-20th century, particularly in the United Kingdom and the United States. It's characterized by its reverence for nature, celebration of seasonal cycles, and belief in magic. Wiccans typically worship a duotheistic or polytheistic pantheon, often centered around a god and a goddess representing the masculine and feminine energies of the universe, respectively. Rituals and ceremonies in Wicca often involve honoring these deities, as well as the elements of nature such as earth, air, fire, and water. Wicca places a strong emphasis on personal experience and individual spiritual growth, and there is no central authority or dogma in the tradition. Wiccans may gather in covens, small groups, or practice solitary, and there is a great deal of variation in beliefs and practices among different practitioners. Overall, Wicca is a diverse and eclectic spiritual path that values harmony with nature, reverence for life, and the pursuit of spiritual wisdom and understanding. The term Wicca originates from Old English and has its roots in the word wiki, which means witch or sorcerer. In Old English, Wicca referred to a male practitioner of witchcraft, while wiki referred to a female practitioner. Over time, the term Wicca has been reclaimed and redefined within the modern pagan movement to specifically denote followers of the contemporary pagan religion founded by Gerald Gardner in the mid-20th century. Gerald Gardner, often considered the father of modern Wicca, popularized the term in his writings and teachings. He drew upon various historical and folkloric sources, as well as his own spiritual experiences, to create the framework for what would become known as Wicca. Gardner used the term Wicca to describe the religious practices and beliefs of his tradition, which he claimed were rooted in ancient pagan traditions and rituals. Since Gardner's time, the term Wicca has been adopted by a diverse array of individuals and groups practicing various forms of modern witchcraft and paganism. It has evolved to encompass a wide range of beliefs, practices, and traditions, but it remains closely associated with contemporary pagan spirituality and the worship of nature deities. Doreen Valiente (1922–1999) was a prominent figure in the modern Wiccan movement. She is often referred to as the mother of modern witchcraft due to her significant contributions to the development and popularization of Wicca. Valiente worked closely with Gerald Gardner, another key figure in the revival of contemporary witchcraft, and played a crucial role in shaping Wiccan rituals and beliefs. Her writings, including books like Witchcraft for Tomorrow and The Charge of the Goddess, have had a lasting influence on the Wiccan community. Valiente's legacy continues to inspire practitioners of witchcraft and paganism worldwide. What's the difference between Wicca and witchcraft? Wiccans who don't identify as witches don't use the term witchcraft in association with their practice of Wicca, they don't use magic, and they draw a distinction between Wicca as a spiritual practice and individual relationship with the divine, and witchcraft as a practice that is not necessarily spiritual. However, many Wiccans do blend magic into their practice to varying degrees, and may use magic as an interchangeable term with witchcraft, often shortened to the craft, in association with Wicca. In fact, some witches who practice witchcraft don't identify as Wiccan at all. And now we're going to take a look at the wheel of the year because the reason why I included this in detail is I really want the audience to know that if you are a Wiccan, usually you're following that as a religion and that includes the wheel of the year because that is part of your um, spiritual belief system. It's, it's part of your dogma and it, it has to be explained. So not everybody understands. They kind of get a fuzzy feeling of what it is because we, you know, we're kind of, uh, 
you know, people in the mainstream and the regular world, uh, you know, take it, take those traditions like at Christmas and Halloween and we don't even know it. And there's other different holidays that we have that are mimicking those, um, you know, ancient traditions of the Wheel of the Year. So I think it was, it's well worth to understand what is the Wheel of the Year and what does it include? And we're going to hear that right now. The Wheel of the Year. The Celtic Wheel of the Year is a spiritual framework based on the seasonal cycles observed by the ancient Celtic peoples. It's a concept embraced by modern pagan and neo-pagan traditions, particularly those influenced by Celtic spirituality, Wiccans who don't identify as witches don't use the term witchcraft in association with their practice of Wicca, they don't use magic, and they draw a distinction between Wicca as a spiritual practice. An individual relationship with the divine, and witchcraft as a practice that is not necessarily spiritual. However, many Wiccans do blend magic into their practice to varying degrees, and may use magic as an interchangeable term with witchcraft, often shortened to the craft, in association with Wicca. In fact, some witches who practice witchcraft don't identify as Wiccan at all. The Wheel of the Year consists of eight major festivals or holidays, which mark significant points in the annual cycle of the seasons. These festivals are typically celebrated through rituals, ceremonies, and gatherings, often involving feasting, storytelling, and various forms of worship or reverence for nature. Although divided into individual paths, all pagans are bound together by a universal force. Many religions claim a respect of nature, but in paganism, our planet's patterns and rhythms are the very bedrock of belief. This wheel of the year spins through the life of the land, the living, the dead, and the divine. One aspect of modern paganism's very close relationship with nature is a common system of eight festivals which are bonded to the turning wheel of the year, which mark not just the way in which the countryside, the natural world, the daylight, the climate change, but the way in which human beings change with them. The way that most, but not all, pagans celebrate the year begins with the festival called Samhain, um, named, known as Halloween by other people, um, on November the 1st and its eve, uh, a celebration of the ancestors and the recently dead. The year moves on to uh, midwinter, to the winter solstice, longest night, shortest day, a time of, of cold and darkness. The wheel turns and we come to the beginning of spring, known as Imbolc. Although it's still cold and, and dark, um, there's more light and the spring is coming. The wheel turns and we come to the end of spring, the beginning of summer, or May Day, um, often known as Beltane. Um, people want to come out and celebrate. Meet your lover, go off into the woods and celebrate vitality. The commitment that you make to one another in that event at Beltane in May Day is even more strongly expressed at the height of summer, with summer solstice, celebration of life and of summer. The wheel turns and summer moves into autumn, so the first festival of, of autumn, known by some pagans as Lammas, um, the first grain is harvested, that celebration of, of the gifts of the earth. The wheel turns its complete circle and we arrive back again where we started at Samhain. Yes, there's going to be a difference between Irish paganism and Norse paganism, Scandinavian and all of these different other cultures. And then when we use the term Celtic, uh, we have to be very careful. Um, now, correct me if I'm not saying it exactly right, because I'm not of that cultural tradition. Celtic is a, again, 
a broad term to kind of mean a groups of people, usually in Europe, uh, including the British Isles, you know, Welsh, um, and sometimes Irish. So to, to kind of like, you know, say, oh, it's like these, these clans of people and maybe even Scotland. But is that, it's not, see, being Celtic is not an actual ethnicity. It's a, it's a term that's used in a specific time frame to express what these different ethnicities were doing in that location in the world, which is in Europe. So you got to be very careful. And then it's like very different than when you start, you know, looking in North, North mythology, Scandinavia, um, and all of these other cultures, um, the Vikings and what their cultural traditions were. They act the same in the sense that in the umbrella of paganism that they have different belief systems that include uh, the belief in deities um, and different types of uh, you know perhaps nature worship and or the reverence of the cycles of nature and then they have their own specific cultural folk magic traditions their own cultural traditions that we have to take the time to look back and be like, okay, this is what the Irish did. <laughs> this is what uh, maybe, you know, the people in England, the, the, the British did, and this is what the Norse did. They're not all the same, and we should not synchronize them as being the same. Same thing when it comes to the Druids and Druidism. Um, that is extremely... Uh, <laughs> um, a heavy subject because in my limited research as someone in the regular world I'm not part of academia I mean I wish I was but I'm doing this all on my on my own time my lifelong journey to read and research and learn and understand the history and origins of the world and, and cultures that the Druids don't really have a written language in books or tablets or even in archaeology to leave us with a objective viewpoint of who they were as a culture and where they derived from. Um, now that gets kind of messy because a lot of spiritual groups um, in quote-unquote ancient mystery schools or secret societies like to claim that they have that ancient knowledge, that occult science from the Druids. Whether they do or they don't is up for debate. And a lot of the books that we have in the mainstream media about Druidism is not truly authentically Druid. <laughs> it's a lot more uh, complex to get those resources. Over time, I'm going to create a list of really insightful historical links and books that we can try to, you know, pick at to, you know, chip away at the truth. But it's okay for me, like, I know I'm never going to be able to get a book and read about this is what the Druids actually believed in and what they, you know, all of that is about. It's part of the occult sciences. It's part of hermeticism as well as um, different elements of, you know, esoteric studies, philosophies from the philosophers, uh, from different, you know, places. You can like Rome and Greece and, of course, Egypt. We can get a, we have to basically look at different areas to, to get a, a broader picture of what they were really about and what they were trying to tell to the world because I actually feel a very significant connection with the Druids and Druidism, maybe from my past life, but I can't pinpoint what exactly they were about. Definitely don't call them pagans. <laughs> They're not witches. 
and they're not <laughs> Wicca. They're their own unique uh, cultural tradition that I wanted to kind of reiterate to you uh, watching this presentation. When members of the Order first came to Ireland, they found that a mighty druidic organization existed there. Members of the Order were druids. They infiltrated the druidic organization, which was a highly complex one, uh, and uh, slightly, well not slightly, but considerably different in Ireland from the continental druids who are described by Caesar in his De Bello Gallicus, the Gallic Wars. He, uh, he, he, most of his information came from a druid named Divitiacus, De, De who was living in Rome. And according to Diviaticus, the druids were the priests and philosophers and astronomers of the Celtic tribes. Uh, they were also magicians and lawgivers, possibly priest kings, but he doesn't make that clear. Now, Caesar was particularly interested in the religions of subject peoples because the Romans believed that if they captured the idols, they had the gods and the people made no more resistance to them. That was one of their techniques of uh, conquering and ruling. It served both purposes. Now, the Druids, as uh, according to Caesar, there have been doubts thrown on whether uh, this Divitiacus existed or not. But according to Caesar, these Druids had a, a great annual ceremony in which they had sacrifices. Historians nowadays agree with Ben that no human sacrifices took place in Ireland. However, the Irish Druids did have their ceremonies, among which were the celebrating of Beltane at the beginning of May and Samhain in November. Celtic Cosmology What remains of Celtic cosmology is somewhat fragmented, for several reasons. Due to the colonization of Europe by the Romans much of Celtic culture was almost completely eliminated, e.g. in Cisalpine Gaul, Gaul and Iberia where the Celtic languages and religious practices quickly fell into disuse. In the British Isles, Ireland in particular, the influence of Roman culture was much weaker which enabled Celtic language, custom and religion to outlive the Western Roman Empire. What is now England was heavily Romanist, however some elements of Celtic culture did survive although this was again diluted by the influx of Germanic and Norse invaders from the 5th century onwards. The arrival of Christianity had an obvious impact on Celtic religion more so than it did on any other aspect of Celtic life, however dating of pagan burial sites in Ireland shows that pagan practice continued alongside Christianity at least into the 8th century BCE. A brief comparison between Roman Catholicism and Celtic or Norse paganism clearly indicates that much of the celebrations and customs of paganism were simply assimilated or reassigned by the church, probably out of necessity. So, in a distorted form, much of paganism has in fact survived into current times. Further to the above, Norman and subsequent English colonization of the entire British Isles forced the remaining Celtic countries into retreat and eventual collapse of their systems of government, agriculture, language and culture in general. This culminated in a ban on Simrig, Gaelge and Gaedlig which lead to the destruction or loss of much of the written and oral culture of the Celtic people. So, unlike Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism or Christianity for example, there is no one text or set of texts that embodies the theological or cosmological system of the pagan Celts. 
What remains is a partial picture of Celtic belief, which has been used to reconstruct Celtic paganism in the modern era, a process that is still continuing today. Now that you've seen a little bit of some research that I did about Celtic cosmology, um, it, it, there's a lot more to cover. This is just <laughs> a few breadcrumbs. And I want to conclude by showing you this next slide, which is... That's right. Is our quest uh, for wanting to connect with these old religions cultural appropriation? Um, it's only cultural appropriation if you're ignorant, if you're a bigot, if you're um, you know judging other spiritual belief systems um, and you know condemning them. Uh, that that to me is what it is. Now there's an unconscious cultural appropriation you know, happening and there's nothing we can do about it. We want, spiritual communities want to experience what antiquity had in the past and they can't have a time machine. <laughs> so they have to reinvent, make a revival and a reinterpretation of those ancient traditions. So that is in of itself cultural crossing. It is a form of cultural appropriation because other cultures are mimicking, um, modeling, and participating in things that they don't come from, but that their heart and their souls feel connected to. So there's a more sincerity of reverence, respect, and honor, and, and this like soul connection to these ancient traditions. And that's why we have such popularity in the spiritual community to have that in our spiritual practice on a day to day. Um, there is evolution in that we have to evolve. Our consciousness is evolving. Our modern era is evolving through uh, the centuries, through the epochs that we have to eventually, you know, let go of the past and present something unique or have a revelation and you know of the future and that this might be coming off topic but th this is where I, I feel it's like some eras in the spiritual community want to hold on ancient traditions but they're not ancient traditions they're just saying that they're ancient traditions and they're propagating it as such that's where I have a problem with that's where cultural appropriation is done inappropriately be transparent if you are a spiritual teacher doing a spiritual movement you can call it ancient mystery teachings but they're not really ancient mystery teachings you are reinventing something that you got from a book that is probably not more than 50 years old if you're lucky maybe 100 years old and you're modeling that off of another teacher or another another group that is of the recent past, but it is not of its origin, of its true cultural history, of its true uh, pictorial of what that culture was truly about. You might have such a connection with it that you are, oh, um, I, I think we're doing these ceremonies like how they did. Like, for example, there's the, there, there are Druids, well, there's all kinds, like the Druids, they are Druids in our modern world and they truly believe they have a lot of this ancient information and some of it is closed circles and some of it is for the public it's you know it's free will in this free will universe what you choose to do but i am here to bring a remembrance on the sacred and that even though we may not have access in the physical world to the ultimate truth <laughs> which is my obsession my exception is my obsession is with finding the truth, but we can't find it in the logical material world because it's hidden, it's distorted, and it's not accessible to everyone. But we can get small glimpses and we can try to be authentic 
in uh, using critical thinking to not get lost in fantasy when it comes to spiritual things, but actual, like, you know, archaeological evidence of such. Now, oh, am I ranting again? <laughs> um, so we have to really just take a moment and be like, okay, this is all the information that I was able to collect from all of these amazing resources from the past. So as a group, as a spiritual group, we feel connected with this particular group from the past. I'm using this as a general example. Okay. Let's try to, um, let's try to bring this back to life, but it's in our own interpretation because we're not in the past. It's, it's a, we're in the modern world. And that's it. And you do that with respect, reverence, honor, grace, humility, dignity, integrity. And you, you honor what they've done and you try to bring that spirit back into yourself to experience that in the modern world. But what really grinds my gears is that these spiritual movements, they like to say, no, no, we have all of the ancient stuff. And, you know, we're, we're doing exactly what they did, which is false. Now, now let's take a look at what is witchcraft. Witchcraft is a practice that encompasses a wide range of beliefs and rituals, often involving the manipulation of energy and the use of natural elements to achieve desired outcomes. It is often associated with pagan and Wiccan traditions but can also be found in various cultural and spiritual contexts worldwide. Practitioners of witchcraft may engage in spell work, divination, herbalism, meditation, and other forms of spiritual exploration. The goals of witchcraft can vary widely, from personal growth and empowerment to healing and protection. Overall, witchcraft is a diverse and multifaceted practice that emphasizes the connection between the individual, nature, and the spiritual realm. The term witchcraft has its origins in Old English and is derived from the combination of two words, wiki, meaning witch or sorcerer, and craft, meaning skill or craft. In its earliest usage, witchcraft referred to the practice of magic, sorcery, or the use of supernatural powers, often associated with individuals who were believed to possess occult knowledge or abilities. The concept of witchcraft has a long history spanning various cultures and civilizations around the world. In pre-Christian Europe, for example, witchcraft was often intertwined with folk beliefs, herbalism, and divination practices. These traditions were later suppressed and demonized by the Christian Church during the Middle Ages and the early modern period, leading to the persecution and execution of countless individuals accused of practicing witchcraft. During the 20th century, especially with the rise of modern Wicca and the revival of pagan spirituality, the perception of witchcraft began to shift. Many contemporary practitioners of witchcraft, including Wiccans and other neo-pagans, embrace the term witchcraft as a positive and empowering expression of their spiritual beliefs and practices. Today, Witchcraft is often associated with various forms of modern pagan and magical traditions, including Wicca, ceremonial magic, folk magic, and other eclectic spiritual paths. It encompasses a wide range of practices, rituals, and beliefs centered around the worship of nature, the practice of magic, and the exploration of personal spirituality. The Salem Witch Trials occurred in colonial Massachusetts between 1692 and 1693. The trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft, primarily women. The accusations began when a group of young girls in the town of Salem Village claimed to be afflicted by witches. The hysteria spread rapidly, resulting in the arrest and imprisonment of numerous individuals. The trials were marked by sensationalism, with witnesses providing often unreliable testimony and spectral evidence being admitted in court. As a result, Many innocent people were accused and convicted of witchcraft, with several being executed by hanging. The trials eventually came to an end when public opinion turned against the proceedings, and the governor of Massachusetts intervened to halt the trials. The Salem witch trials have since become a symbol of mass hysteria, 
religious extremism, and miscarriages of justice. They serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of scapegoating and the importance of due process and critical thinking. The origin of the word, which, can be traced back to Old English and its Germanic roots. The Old English word, Wicca, referred to a male practitioner of witchcraft, while Wiki referred to a female practitioner. These terms were used to describe individuals believed to possess supernatural powers or engage in magical practices. The word Wicca itself is thought to derive from the Proto-Germanic word Wiccjaz, which means necromancer or one who practices sorcery. This root word is also related to the Old High German word Wizago, meaning sorcerer or wizard. In more recent times, particularly with the rise of modern pagan and magical traditions, the word witch has been reclaimed and redefined by practitioners to describe individuals who identify with various forms of contemporary witchcraft, paganism, and magical spirituality. Today, the term witch is often used in a positive and empowering sense to denote someone who practices magic, honors nature, and follows their own spiritual path. Most witches will refer to their practice of magic as witchcraft, but may use either term. And of course, the word magic is also a bit tricky, as it has its own set of meanings. Ceremonial magic is older than Wicca and was an original influence for what would eventually become Wicca, but it's actually a practice in its own right, in other words, not part of the religion. This ceremonial magic has several differences from the magic practiced by witches. Ceremonial magic was derived from occult traditions through secret societies like the Freemasons and the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and is often quite elaborately ritualized. The term high magic is sometimes used to distinguish it from witchcraft, which is called folk magic or even low magic by many of its practitioners. Some who practice ceremonial magic may identify as pagans but are not Wiccans or witches. Some simply identify as magicians. What some call practical magic is a kind of ceremonial magic aimed at achieving common life improvements, such as healing physical or emotional ills, attracting love, and improving one's finances. Some Wiccans see this form of magic as non-spiritual and distinct from Wicca, but others blend the two by performing magic in alignment with their deities and for the good of all, rather than just for their own personal gain. An atheist witch is a term that may seem paradoxical at first glance but refers to someone who practices witchcraft or identifies as a witch while also holding atheistic beliefs. In more recent times, particularly with the rise of modern pagan and magical traditions, the word witch has been reclaimed and redefined by practitioners to describe individuals who identify with various forms of contemporary witchcraft, paganism, and magical spirituality. Today, the term witch is often used in a positive and empowering sense to denote someone who practices magic, honors nature, and follows their own spiritual path. For an atheist witch, the practice of witchcraft may involve rituals, spells, meditation, or other techniques that are grounded in psychological principles, symbolism, and the natural world, rather than in religious or supernatural beliefs. They may view witchcraft as a form of self-exploration, personal empowerment, or a means of affecting change in their lives or the world around them, without necessarily invoking or relying on divine intervention. In essence, being an atheist which means embracing the cultural and spiritual aspects of witchcraft while maintaining a worldview that does not include belief in gods or supernatural entities. It's a unique intersection of spirituality, personal philosophy, and magical practice that allows individuals to explore their own understanding of the universe and their place within it. Agnostic witchcraft refers to the practice of witchcraft by individuals who identify as agnostic, meaning they hold the belief that the existence of deities or the supernatural is unknown or unknowable. In agnostic witchcraft, practitioners may engage in magical rituals, spells, and other practices without necessarily adhering to specific religious beliefs or dogma. Agnostic witches often focus on the experiential and practical aspects of witchcraft, such as harnessing natural energies, working with symbolism, and exploring personal intuition and creativity. They may view witchcraft as a tool for self-discovery, personal empowerment, 
and manifesting change in their lives, rather than as a means of worshipping gods or connecting with divine forces. One of the key principles of agnostic witchcraft is openness to different interpretations of magic and spirituality. Agnostic witches may draw inspiration from various cultural traditions, mythologies, and spiritual practices, integrating elements that resonate with them personally while remaining skeptical or agnostic about the existence of supernatural beings. Ultimately, agnostic witchcraft allows individuals to explore and engage with the magical and spiritual dimensions of life in a way that aligns with their own beliefs, experiences, and values, without feeling constrained by religious doctrines or the need to adhere to specific theological principles. It emphasizes personal autonomy, critical thinking, and the importance of subjective experience in spiritual exploration. Now in this next slide, there's so many different categories of types of witches. And this is just basically a broad view of what's in the spiritual community in the 21st century. So we have things like green witch, crystal witch, traditional witch, cosmic witch, sea witch, gray witch, and so forth, as you can see in this list. And basically it's putting your, um, your focus and your creativity and your uh, personality as a title and then attaching witch to it. <laughs> um, so, and that's fine. Like, for example, like for the sake of labels, and I, I don't like using labels, for the sake of labels, I always say I'm a kitchen witch. Okay. I, I am no longer pagan and I am no longer Wiccan because of my newfound transformation, which I'll talk about, which is monotheistic, but I still hold belief systems in paganism, not Wiccan or, Wic or, or Wicca because I don't practice that as a religion, but I consider myself still a kitchen witch because I, d I still do what's termed the craft in the kitchen and working with food, herbs and different um what would be deemed superstitious um belief systems or folk magic in the kitchen makes me a kitchen witch now a lot of people don't like using the word witch at all but i actually love that i love that term because for me a witch is someone anyone that can mold and shape their own reality period. They are taking ownership, authority, and action for their own life. They're, they're taking control over their own life and they're trying different things to better themselves. Now, whether or not you take a, <laughs> a darker approach to that, that is your free will's choice in this dualistic universe. But for myself, I do things along the line of raising the vibration of water and food, doing different types of spellcraft for the protection of the home. So a lot of people would say that's more of a heart witch um, uh, or a green witch, because if a green witch, if you're working with herbs, but a heart witch is if you're working more with the home or if some people like calling it house witch. I mean, literally, we now have a spectrum of different um, identification uh, titles and labels and you know that really is a positive in one aspect of like being an individual and being respected and seen for who you want to be and who you feel you are um, on another level it can get really out of hand if you're like to me like I don't want to have any disrespect but it, it can get really out of hand if you're really you know, pushing the boundaries of something and then attaching it, it to which I'm going to leave it at that because at one point, are we not like, are we going to start, you know, throwing everything under the sun and then calling it, which <laughs> sorry, but that's just the way I feel, but there are real titles with real significances. There are individuals that, you know, truly feel like like when you call yourself an ele elemental witch or a fairy witch or a fae witch i mean you're you're basically declaring that you have a spiritual connection with the fae with the fairies with the elementals and that is your spiritual practice and therefore you are the um authority and the uh representation and the spokesperson for that you better be taking that very serious and presenting that with 
transparency and authenticity. Which is, mm-hmm. I guess you found me out, huh? Yeah. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should come around here on Halloween. You'd really see something then. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we all jump off the roof and fly. We kill our husbands, too. Or is that outside your jurisdiction? Do you have any idea how strange this all sounds to me? I, I, I got people telling me that you're up here cooking up placenta bars, that you're into devil worship. No, no, there's no devil in the craft. So what kind of uh, craft do you do? Do I do? Hmm. I manufacture bath oils and soaps and hand lotions and shampoo. Mm-hmm. And the ants, um, they like to meddle in people's love lives. Magic isn't just spells and potions. Your badge? It's just a star. Just another symbol. Your talisman. You can't stop criminals in their tracks, can it? It has power because you believe it does. Wish you could believe in me. If you stayed with me this far, I am so pleased. Thank you so much. We're almost at the end. Um, Now, when we're talking about what it means to be pagan, what it means to be a Wiccan, what it means to be um, a witch in witchcraft, I have to say that there is no devil in the craft. This is not about um, Luciferianism, the Church of Satan, or um, perhaps any type of darker path. There are negative and darker elements to any uh, spiritual belief system, but overall it's not really about the devil. There's no devil in the craft. There's an understanding that there are different spiritual forces um, and it's that approach to those spiritual forces that makes that individual either be good or evil or or somewhere in between but i have to advocate that there is there is negativity in 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 this spiritual community but there's negativity in mainstream religions as well so um, we're going to take a look at a piece of art which is basically at the forefront in everyone's human consciousness of what it means when you say these words, pagan, witches, witchcraft. This is what you feel. So this is a picture of witches bowing down to Satan or to the devil. And based, and this was created in 1608. And it's basically representing that individuals that follow, um, you know, the devil, whether you want to call him Lucifer, Baphomet, uh, Satan, whatever, that witches have to take an oath to follow Lucifer. And by doing so, they have to literally kiss his ass. (laughs) Um, And that is based on the consciousness of those peoples in the early 1600s or the late 1500s of being fearful of other religions that's not their own. That's where it stems from. Were there people in the past that perhaps were worshiping Lucifer? Oh, I'm sure there were. I mean, that's since the beginning of time, okay? Like, but it doesn't mean that it's all of that and it doesn't mean that it's to be labeled as such so this is what's happening with the propaganda to try to make people really afraid of what these other cultures were believing in now i'm going to show you a series of different art pieces that i feel 
is what is happening in our collective consciousness. In our collective consciousness, we're just programmed to believe that this is what a witch looks like, and this is what these belief systems are all about. And whether or not you believe them or finally you've been deprogrammed, it's just at the forefront. And it's been happening since a very long time ago. So in this piece of art, um, we see uh, a group of witches, and this is how we really see witches. We see a whole bunch of hags and weird women, you know, doing weird stuff in nature on broomsticks and just having a lot of weird connections with animals, with the devil, and really doing spell work to bring misfortune for different types of people. So this is what the artistry was of that time. Again, this is classic, a witch, an old hag on a broomstick with a black cat and um, their hat that's like a cone shaped. And we're going to decode what this actual image stemmed from in another video uh, because all of these symbologies, like from the broom to the hat to the cat, like they're, they're all stemmed from other types of uh, cultural superstitions. But when we think of which, this is what we've been programmed to believe, to look at what it looks like. And in the mid 19th century, this is an interpretation of Macbeth meeting the witches who prophesized his future and so sealed his faith. So when we have like things like Shakespeare or very prominent figures in literature, um, you know, depicting, you know, witches in a certain way, it's going to influence generations because that's what they're reading. So that is just an example of how witches were portrayed in Macbeth. And again, even as far back as like Greek mythology, there is always a type of imagery when it comes to witches. Usually it's uh, either a, a hag or a beautiful woman. And if it's a beautiful woman, it's usually someone that is more um, looking more seductively and more romanticized, uh, just to give you an example. And then if we um, fast forward to, you know, just up to the 1960s, we have images like uh, the TV shows Bewitched, and they're still portraying, as you can see, the witch on the broomstick with the top hat and dressed in black. But there's a more comical uh, way of looking at it. And this is how the programming is like, okay, let's make it more like Disney fantasy um, of what a witch is, uh, but it's still derogatory in my personal opinion. And then, of course, we know Practical Magic. Um, a lot of people love this movie, but again, you have to understand that Hollywood and the, and the, the movie industry, they're not really there to show authentic uh, cultural representations of people. And a lot of people, you know, even though this, this movie might be uh, entertaining to watch, it is not at all in any shape, way, or form a good representation of what witches are and their types of witchcraft because they go straight for the darker forces of necromancy which is um yes an aspect of witchcraft but it's not really what it's about and of course they you know they always have to have darker themes because that's what's entertaining but it's not a good representation but again you can see the programming that they're you know they're giving us this is what a witch looks like today. This is <laughs> whether or not your style is more eclectic or goth or um, I don't know. I don't know all the styles, but this is what a witch looks like today. It could be anyone <laughs> at any age in any stage of their life. Normal people because it's normal. Okay, we have to get over this weird distortion of what practicing the craft is about and how people are supposed to look when they're doing it. We got to break those programmings. And a lot of people that are identifying as pagan, Wiccan, or practicing the craft in witchcraft as a witch 
can be using those elements but still practicing other types of spiritualities. Like a lot of uh, aspects in Catholicism can be deemed as witchcraft in the sense of like spiritual novenas or the use of candles, the rosary, the repetition of chants and prayers can be seen as aspects of the craft that was, you know, like part of it. But if you're a fundamentalist, you're not going to want to hear that. And I respect that. Like I, like I am only here to give information. I am not here to convert or convince anyone of anything. I'm actually trying to promote people to be more tolerant. Be more tolerant. Understand where the origins of things come from. Of course, every mainstream religion is going to have a ritual. There's a church and there's a ritual. There's some kind of tradition going on. It's based on older traditions in this in this in this umbrella field <laughs> of paganism. It's part of the human psyche to want to get in groups of people like tribes and either sing or chant or do something that they believe in or to worship something that they believe in, whether that be as ancient as worshiping the sun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's humans evolving and doing the same thing over and over again. Certain humans like to say, no, this group is the, is the truth, the way, and the only thing. It's not. <laughs> and you can be someone like me that pretty much tried it all and be like, you know, right now I'm doing what is termed mysticism as a mystic because I'm choosing a monotheistic practice, but I still understand the spiritualism in paganism and yes i i do still look at other cultures traditions and include them in my own spirituality it's just my focus is not on pos polytheistic deity um devotion or being a priestess of anything like so i'll, I'll explain that more in my in my other videos but you can have aspects of paganism uh, not so much Wicca, like paganism and the craft, because Wicca is really about like, I am that religion, in my opinion. When you're Wicca, you're doing aspects of the craft and in paganism. And when I say paganism, I mean like shamanism, folk magic, different cultural traditions from a lot of different cultures, you know, that you're nitpicking from and borrowing them. <laughs> So you can be a lot of many things. You don't have to be just one thing. It's okay. It's okay to change, to grow, to evolve. I've allowed myself to let go of some past belief systems and bringing in new belief systems because of my own personal gnosis and where I'm at in my own spiritual evolution and consciousness. And I really want to bring back a remembrance of respecting every spiritual avenue but also having the responsibility to understand its origins and background and significance. You have to take the time to understand these things or else you're not really living them truly. You're just doing it on the surface. You have to, you have to go deep. So now we're going to look at a little bit of some unknown history in regards to these subjects. The Unknown History Despite the claims of Margaret Murray, Gardner, and others to have discovered and revived an authentic ancient tradition, academic historians never could find much factual evidence to support the witch cult theory. And within the movement, leaders' claims of trance states, being descendants of ancient witch lineages or reincarnations of witches from former centuries were sometimes doubted, even by other witches. It's possible that anxiety over the perceived degree of validity and authenticity of Wicca has caused some witches to take strong stances in favor of one tradition over others, one belief over another, and to argue incessantly about it. It's also possible that these questions of authenticity led some witches to draw more heavily from what is known about traditions from other cultures and other esoteric practices than from the specific material that was supposed to link the modern religion directly to its ancient past. Yet, with all that is unknown about the past peoples and cultures that Wicca draws inspiration from, 
what is known is that there was something, some energetic phenomenon that was mystical and magical enough to keep a hold on humanity, even through the rise of Christianity and its eventual domination of the parts of the world most frequently associated with the old religion. European folk magic traditions, many of which are incorporated into Wiccan magic, were possibly descended from this same source. And we also know that pagans and shamans of cultures around the world sought to interact with the unseen world in similar ways, through music, dance, and altered states of consciousness. So it might be enough to say that what the original founders of modern Wicca did was create new forms through which people could tap into the mystical, bridging the gap between the ancient and modern worlds with new expressions of a magical energy that has always existed. There may be a dizzying variety of interpretations of these new forms, but there are enough commonalities among them, and enough people participating, to make it clear the old religion is back, and here to stay. So, quick, what is the difference between a pagan and Wiccan and witchcraft? <laughs> Let's take, a, let's take a look at this final slide. So a pagan is a path of influence by historical paganism, also known as non-Abrahamic religions. So you can think of paganism as everything that's not incorporated as a mainstream religion or a non-Abrahamic religion. Okay, you can think of it that way. Uh, so Wiccan is a modern pagan religion uh, blending European folk traditions with 19th and 20th century occultism. So Wiccan being a Wicca is a newfound religion in the 19th and 20th century if you want to be part of that group. And witchcraft is the study and practice of magic and occult such as alchemy. So for myself as a mystic I'm still considered uh, practicing the craft because I still research and practice and try to formulate occult sciences, classical esoterica. And the craft is the actual non-denominational formula. You can think of it as in numerology, astrology, natural magic, the mathematics, the quantum physics, the mechanisms of spirituality. That's how I see witchcraft, <laughs> uh, because it's like the formula in alchemy. And I still very much work in that domain. And that is what witchcraft means to me, the craft. Like you're using a craft uh, if you are simply uh, blessing an object for protection or doing any type of home protection. Or if you want to have more financial luck, maybe you'll do candle magic. Like there's different elements of that. And of course, you can get a lot more deep when it comes to high magic, ceremonial magic, um, and the uh, lesser keys of Solomon and, and those types of things. I'll do videos on that later. Like there's different like degrees of uh, witchcraft in the craft. But when it comes to the craft, I deal with personally low magic, natural magic, the natural world. I'm only interested in what nature has to teach me how to be one with uh, the unity of consciousness within all things, within all beings. And, you know, a little bit of um, animism in that, which is understanding animals and the plant life and, uh, you know, using herbs, fruits and vegetables, teas, different types of things to heal yourself. So, you know, you can think of that as part of the witchcraft. But when it comes to paganism, a paganism usually is the belief in multiple deities like you do you do not believe in just one god but i i would ask perhaps a pagan do you think that there is one god encompassing all other gods and goddesses that's up for debate as well everyone has their own spiritual philosophies and that's totally fine but for me as a mystic the, the monotheistic avenue of mysticism is the reunite the, the reunion with the mystical experience of you and the divine now a lot of people do that but with their own specific deity in 
paganism in, in different types of belief systems. Especially in Wicca, they honor the the lord and the lady the horn god and the goddess and they can choose different goddesses whatever it is that they want to be a uh whoever they want their matron or patron deity to be there's a lot of individuals that want to be a priestess of i am a priest a priestess of this goddess this god because i've devoted my work they i am working for them and that's another spiritual path so if you're confused <laughs> to make it really simple paganism is mostly based on a culture's past traditions okay think of like gypsies think of like druids think of like different uh you know indigenous aboriginals or or uh original peoples of the land like especially irish irish is very different but then when he's like oh what's the difference between irish paganism and british but that's because they're two different peoples the people of of britain and the or, or england versus you know uh, the irish or the scottish you know they're they're going to have different tradition so it is different forms of paganism so think of it like that like paganism is about that specific uh society's uh, spiritual beliefs and Wicca Wiccan is a newfound religion by Gerald Gardner and the different um, peoples that have you know propagated those quote-unquote old religions you know you're Wiccan you're following that specific path because it's a it's a reinvention of those ancient traditions but you're you're following a person's mindset not everybody agrees with that when it comes to being Wiccan. They, they think it's a lot more loosely. But if you're not really following Gerald Gardner's traditional grimoire, then you're not really Wicca, Wiccan because that is what he invented. Some people like to use... I'm, I'm following Wicca, but I'm going into North mythology and I'm doing other things that have nothing to do with Gerald. I'm like, okay. It's not technically, it's like saying, well, I mean, I guess it's like saying, you know, I'm Christian, but I'm, I'm a Christian witch. <laughs> you, you see, it's very like, there's a lot, there's a lot of labels and terms. People don't like being told what to do. People don't like being like, yeah, I will be whatever I want to be. And absolutely, you have the right to be whatever it is that you want to be. But when we're looking at it more in academia, we have to have certain categories and boundaries. And I don't think it involves all of that. And witchcraft is basically the study of occult sciences and natural magic. That it's it's about the the uh, the formulations of things. It has nothing to do with believing in God or the goddess or or universal consciousness or anything like that. It has to do with somewhat of a belief system in perhaps, you know, not just the material plane and science, like you have to have some kind of concept or belief or leniency towards energy and whether you want to think of it like quantum physics or quantum mechanics, if you want to look at it that more scientifically that way without putting spiritual terms and names to it, that's fine. But there is a, an energy. You have to believe in energy because I think if you don't believe in energy as a whole, you're not going to be able to practice the craft because the craft is all about working like with different substances, like an, an alchemy, unless you're just doing it scientifically like an alchemist. But that's that's chemistry. That's not spiritual alchemy which also includes science it includes both the material and the etheric world bridging both science and spirit together that is what witchcraft is in my humbled opinion <laughs> so my dear friends i really hope um, that gave you a broader perception on what the difference is between these three 
very different practices um, you know that are often misinterpreted in the spiritual community if i left out anything if there's anything you want to comment if there's anything you know you feel about please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts i really want to foster um, a channel and an area for you to feel free to express yourself as long as you're doing it uh, kindly and um, and uh, kindly <laughs> i respect all all aspects of freedom of speech conclusion the history of paganism wiccan slash wicca and witchcraft is very convoluted a practitioner who identifies with any of these terms engages in a reconstruction of ancient practices drawing from selected traditions of various cultures tribes and aboriginals from around the world to say it is an old religion is both true and untrue while it incorporates elements of ancient spiritual traditions from past civilizations, its revival is part of a new thought movement. The connection with nature-based religions exhibits perfect symmetry, as human beings have historically observed the natural world to glean the meaning of life and to understand their place on earth and in the cosmos. There is a profound spirituality inherent in these practices, each igniting the spark of human illumination on the soul's path to spiritual enlightenment. Let us delve into our past to gain insight into the future of humanity. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, stay tuned for more bridge presentations to come.